you guys were there for the Rougeau's Bulldogs uh, heat that they had. What, what was your take on that whole situation between the two teams? <coughs> um, well, every dog has his day. I think uh, I got a really good take on it. Uh, I said both parties pretty well. Me and Jim were working on the Rougeau's at the time. And the Bulldogs were like our best buddies down there. But Dynamite was, um, you know, I had a suffered you know, measurably from a small man complex and really had a chip chip on his shoulder that way. And it always, um, it was like a little pit bull that had gotten into a lot of scraps. Was, uh, that old saying, what every dog has his day is a true saying. And, uh, what happened was um, Kurt Henning had been ribbed the Rougeos. And um, Rougeos didn't know who it was. They assumed it was Kurt, but Kurt was so clear, clever in how he how he hit it from the Rougeos that uh, they didn't know who it was. And so Jock uh, ratted out uh, Dynamite to the, to the uh, head off or to Vince or whatever, or said he did. I don't know if he did. He complained that uh, that uh, Dynamite had screwed him with his stuff. Right. And I think Kurt was uh, left, kept ribbing him. And um, so <clears throat> Kurt. I don't think he meant to, I don't think anyone had any real, no one ever saw that was going to get into this big of a deal, but Kurt came in and said, he's in there saying, the Rougeos are saying it was you, the Dynamite, the Dynamite this, so Dynamite was, gets all, he was like, I think, looking for a reason to finally have a chance to snatch Jock, who was, had a lot of friction sometimes with guys like Dynamite and stuff, he was a little too much of, uh, I don't even know what it was, say, but Jock sometimes, wore out guys like Dynamite. It was the clash of personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dynamite walked in on Jock and uh, slapped him with an open hand slap while he was playing cards. He just slapped him and knocked him off his chair. And, uh, basically, he almost knocked him off the ball. An open hand slap from behind was pretty, pretty stiff. And Jock, I don't think he ever thought of himself as a real tough guy. Got out to What's your problem with the kind of guy words? Right. Dynamite, uh, I think Jock threw a couple punches at Dynamite. Dynamite took him down and choked him out in the dressing room. Embarrassed him a couple of times. I think the last time he front face locked him and took him down. While he was choking him out, he, uh, he taunted Ray and said, Come on, Ray, you know, whatever you want, join in. You can come in, join in anytime you want. And Ray had just injured his knee two or three nights before. He actually had the ice bag on his knee, so he wasn't faking nothing. He, he, could, he was still working with me and Jim every day. But Ray, who was a pretty tough guy, was a Golden Cup boxing champion in Montreal and stuff, was a little easy to underestimate because Jock, Jock was uh, easy going. But Ray was actually pretty salty, pretty tough. And uh, might have given Dynamite a pretty good run for his money. And Dynamite kept taunting that night. <clears throat> and um, what happened after that was that uh, every night, Dynamite or Jim Raymond. Ray standing over Dynamite through that jock in the front face lock and uh, Ray saying, just let him up. Ray was really good about it, like really calm. And he was just, you know, he moved your brain and let him up. And Dynamite was pretty cocky and so he kept saying stuff like, you know, ready for, you know, if you want peace too. The thing was that every, every night after that for the next week, Dynamite kept walking in the dressing room. And they kind of, most people forget those kind of, those things happen in wrestling. You know, right. Problems. And, but Dynamite come in, set his bag down, and go, hey, Ray, how's your knee? Whatever you want. You know, and he kept provoking it, sticking it, sticking it in Ray's eye. And I could tell, and Jim will come by, remember, that every night we worked with the Rushas, they were getting more tense, that there was that relaxed working atmosphere between them. They were getting more, and it wasn't us, it was, Bulldogs were just really starting to, they were just thinking about We didn't that. realize that they were down in the other locker room. And so it just got so tense. I remember down with Dynamite, I said, you better watch your back. These guys are pissed off. And they're really, you know, they were Dynamite going, you know, let him try. Let him try. Like he wished he was willing it, provoking it every time he saw them. <clears throat> and when the actual fight happened, um, Dynamite was, uh, me and Jim were in, uh, we, we weren't at the TV tapings that day, which is a odd thing where they flew us to uh, somewhere out to California and work with the Bolsheviks in the uh, dark the spot show or whatever. Right. Uh, but uh, the Rougeau's uh, jock uh, just decided that Raymond, I think Raymond uh, 
getting jock, building them up and saying you can do it. And uh, Dynamite was coming around the corner at the TVs in uh, Toledo. And uh, jock just sucker punched him when he came around the corner, just knocked all his teeth out, knocked his smoke. Just gave him one shot, overhand, right punch as hard as he could, just drilled him in the face, knocked all his teeth out. And Dynamite never went down. Just stood there with his hands on his knees, bent over. And the two Ruchos ran out, got there, grabbed all their stuff, jumped in their car, and drove off. <clears throat> and then I think that the thing that I think that kind of killed the heart or killed the spirit of Dynamite was that uh, after the show, they didn't see the Ruchos. And uh, they had to go on a tour of Europe. It was a tour of France. The Ruchos of Morocco, a bunch of guys went over to France. And then they got into all kinds of trouble in there, drunk and crazy police, a lot of problems on the trip. And uh, as a matter of fact, Morocco got fired and right. came back. But uh, there was a, a lot of it was built around because the Bulldogs were really popular with everybody. Everybody loved the Bulldogs. They were like two bad pit bulls there. Well, not even two, one bad pit bull. But everybody had a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. And I think when you see a tough guy like that, like, you have that happen to him. There's a certain the heartbreak that goes with it. A lot of guys felt that with him. And uh, Jock was never a tough guy, never pretended to be. But he, uh, <clears throat> what happened, I think, when they came back, I'm not making a long story of it, is that uh, Vince had Dynamite's SummerSlam check, they had this, the upcoming Survivor Series check, plus possibly maybe even his WrestleMania check. I can't remember if he took that long to get it those days. But he had all his royalty checks. He had Dynamite had about a hundred thousand dollars or so that Vince was holding, just in that, case that was coming, that was due him. And when Dynamite came back from France, uh, Vince said, "You gotta shake hands and forget the whole thing." And uh, Dynamite was like, like, everyone was waiting for Dynamite to, you know, to fix the Rougeos kind of thing. And uh, I'm sure the Rougeos figured that too. But I don't think Ray was afraid of it very much. All right. And uh, Vince basically put it to Dynamite, you either shake hands and, uh, and uh, or you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And so Dynamite shook hands with uh, Jacques Rougeau in a hotel room in San Francisco. And uh, I think it broke his spirit. He shook hands and did everything the way he thought he should do at the time and do this for his family because it was... And he got the money, he went home, and he became a bitter alcoholic that just uh, just went downhill from there. I just ate him up just as time went on. Just ate him up. And the old saying, whatever dog has his days, <laughs> that was his day.